Welcome to Balloon and Chill NFL Edition. I'm Anthony K. Here as always with my man Jermaine J Dub. How you doing, man? Yo, what's going on? It's football season. Let's do it. You know, we talk so much basketball, and I love that. But I gotta be honest with the, with everybody. For the people at home, for you, you know this. I'm I'm a football head. I love. I, Twelve months out of the year, I'm doing something NFL related. So I love football. So this is. I love the fact that we're doing this. And we're going to just jump right in because there's been some stories that have been long lingering and there's some new stuff. So I'm going to start with the first one. Aaron Rodgers comes out at the beginning of the offseason basically saying, I'm not playing for the Packers anymore. The Packers say, oh, we're not trading you. They go back and forth. It's public. It's out in the open. Eventually, now we find out he's going to play one more season. They're going to give him some outs afterwards. He just wanted some power. I think, for me, I think he saw what was happening with Tom Brady going to the Bucks and him saying, hey, I want Gronk. I want Antonio Brown. And the Bucks saying, okay. Mm-hmm. And Rodgers felt like, hey, I want that, that freedom to do that. Now, Tom Brady had a different career than Aaron Rodgers. So maybe he deserved it more. So what, what is your take on, one, the public, two, can a team that went through this in the offseason, can they come back? Can Aaron Rodgers lead that team when they all know he's just playing out the last year so he can get out of here? Well, we'll start the conversation with the Green Bay Packers. I think they was in the NFC Championship game four times in the last 10 years. So they're not a team to be, to be taken lightly. I mean, Aaron Rodgers is arguably the most talented quarterback in the history of the game. Now, when he asks for something, when your best employee asks for something, at the very least, you have to listen. However, this is year what? We, we're going into year 16 with Aaron Rodgers, which means he's getting a little long in the tooth. Now, he didn't appreciate them drafting Jordan Love. I could understand it because Aaron's not going to play forever. Aaron's going to be – he's going to get older a lot quicker than he's going to stay who he is. That's, who, that, that's how football works. So with that being <laughs> said, Green Bay is – planning for the future well why didn't you get me a wide receiver why didn't you get me another running back green bay could have absolutely done those things but they didn't and i can appreciate rogers complaining about this sort of stuff but in the end i still think that he handled it the way an the, the, the way a high level employee would which is i'm gonna kick and stomp and i'm gonna let you know that I am here and you need to take me seriously because without me, it is very difficult for this company to run the way it runs. So I want to pause. I want to pause you there for a sec. I want to pause you there because you said something interesting when they drafted Jordan Love. Did Green Bay handle that properly after what they already went through? Like they should know when they drafted Aaron Rodgers, they didn't have that conversation with Brett Favre. They didn't tell Brett Favre, hey, you're still our guy. We're thinking of, of drafting this quarterback because if he slips into our hands late, because if you remember Aaron Rodgers slipped in the draft, mm-hmm. we're able to pick him up. Look, you're not going to play forever. It's just a succession plan. You know, We're not kicking out tomorrow. We mm-hmm. want you to play as long as you can. But, hey, mm-hmm. mentor and grow this guy. So when it's time, when you decide, right, admit whether they felt this way or not, but if they tell that him, decide it's time to go, you know, you're been a great for the Packers, and you can say, hey, then you can work when you're ready to this person that you've molded. If they had had a conversation with Brett Favre, I think that changes that dynamic. Learning what they learned where, learning what they learned, doing what they did with Rodgers, wouldn't they have a conversation now with Rodgers and say, hey, just like we drafted you to eventually replace Brett, we need to look to the future as well. Even Does if that get any better? Even if they would have had that conversation, I'm still in a position where I'm on my way out and I'm not ready to go yet. I still think that I can play. That's number one. Number two, yeah. you can find great players in the later rounds. I mean, Terrell Owens was drafted in the third round. Frank Gore was drafted in the third round. So you can find great wide receivers. You can find great running backs and great offensive tackles in the later rounds. No question about it. Richard Sherman was drafted in the fifth round. So you can find great players in the later rounds. What Aaron Rodgers, how Aaron Rodgers handled this was a guy who felt like he still has it and he's not getting the respect that he needs. He yeah. feels like he should, it seems to me like he feels like he should be on the same plateau when he asks for things like Tom Brady. 
like Peyton Manning, should those he? guys. When those guys ask for things, at the very least, management listens. Now, this is a different management than when Brett Favre was there. These aren't the same people. So Fair. I, I also think that without having a an owner, like the Cowboys got an owner. Uh, Indianapolis has an owner. So I don't think this would have went nearly as far as it did had they had an owner, an actual owner who we could walk down to his office and we can have a discussion or he'll come see me and say, listen, this is nonsense. I'm going to take care of this. You're our guy. We're going to we're going to take care of this as opposed to, you know, we got a bunch of we got a bunch of chefs in the kitchen. And, you know, who's who is exactly running this thing? So there, there's the a way- figurehead. There's a figurehead. But, yes, the team is owned by the people. So right. I, I agree with you on that one for sure. So, you know, with, with that being said, I'm looking at a guy in Aaron Rodgers who I think he's coming to the end of the line in Green Bay. I don't think he's washed. I don't think he's washed yet. I still think he's got some good years left. But he did ask. If I remember, if I'm not mistaken, he did ask after the 49ers beat them in the NFC Championship. He did say, quote, we have to get these games. We got to get some playoff games in Green Bay because I think that we would be a lot more. I think we'd be a lot more efficient if we did that in Green Bay and teams have to come to cold weather. End quote. He said that. Well, Tampa came up there in the NFC Championship and they handled it. You got what you wanted. But it seems like it's always something else. Well, coach didn't go for it on fourth down and five. I think that he's been put in a position plenty of times to win, and he has not delivered. Yeah. Listen, if you're here, here's my thing. I, I understand as, as a player, as an athlete, I, I want the best players around me, right? Like we talk about basketball all the time, and I, you know, super teams, this and super. Listen, if I'm able to get all the best players on my team, I'm going to do it. And so I get him from that perspective saying, hey, I've got a great wide receiver in Devontae Adams. But other than that, I really haven't had much around me. And one situation is you can use that as an excuse or, hey, let's compare him to Tom Brady since that's who he wants to be complained with. When did Tom Brady have a top-tier receiving core? Never. Right? Never. He, he, he dealt with the pieces he was given. And so as much as I agree with Aaron Rodgers that, look, they haven't done many favors, I also got to look at the other side and say, has Aaron Rodgers come through and elevated those guys to the point – if you're good enough to make it to the NFC Championship game, you're good enough to win. I say this all the time. I say this all the time. If you're good enough to make it to the Super Bowl, you're good enough to win. Facts. Now, rewind the clock. Have, yeah. Rewind the clock, Tom. Rewind the clock back to 20, I think it was 2014 in the NFC Championship game against Seattle. Russell Wilson is trash. He threw three interceptions that day. In fact, he's we're gonna the reason why we're going to lose is going to be because of me. That's what Russell Wilson is thinking. Y'all should have won that game. Instead, Seattle basically put the clamps on them. And I can appreciate it's the Legion of Boom. However, you had a re- you had a legit shot to win that game. That game went into overtime. And you didn't and you didn't deliver. So it's not always everybody else's fault, especially when it comes to this guy. Yeah. yeah like you to go to, see- listen, you go to overtime. If you go to overtime, there's I get it. Like I said, the ball bounces a certain way, certain things happen, a call here, a call there. I'm understanding of all those things, but I'm also one to say, hey, if you're good enough to make it there, you're good enough to sure. win. So that's one quarterback who's coming back into the fold. I think he's done after this year in in, in Green Bay. To another that. quarterback now who was going to be, you know, I feel, I feel bad for Carson Wentz because he was on an MVP pace. Then he gets hurt. He gets replaced by a backup who goes on a historic run. The team wins a Super Bowl. They put his statue out in front of the stadium and then bring you back as the starter. And he's on another team doing nothing. I I don't know how that plays to your mental psyche. And now you go to this other team where you're reuniting with that guy, that Frank Wright, that coach who helped you get there to that MVP status. Mm -hmm. And what happens in the first training camp there when everyone's like, hey, the Colts are there. They've got the offensive line. Now they have some offensive line issues since then. But at the time, they have one of the best offensive lines in football. They have a really good defense, a really good coach, uh, weapons, skilled positions. They just need a quarterback, right? They tried the, you know, I I hate to use this term, but old man Rivers, right? Came in, did the best he could. But, hey, so they're like, hey, Carson Wentz, healthy. We have a shot. Like, we're talking Super Bowl potential for the Colts. Now he gets hurt. Mm-hmm. And what's the first? And I, 
And what's the first name that people start throwing out to, to cover him when he's hurt? Yeah. Nick Foles. Good the guy. same guy with the statue. Oh, no. You can't do that to him, right? Like, no, you, you can't. Can. Can. They got to find can. someone else because no. if I'm Carson Wetz, I'm like, I'm out. Like, if you, okay. bring, if you bring in Foles, I'm out. Mm. <laughs> and he come back. What do, what do the Colts do now? Well, the problem that we've had with Carson Wentz over the years was his ability to hold up. His ability to play, that just came into play last season. I mean, he was pretty solid. He had an MVP season before he tore his knee up. And not only that, this is the same guy who, I mean, I said this a couple years back when he was at North Dakota State. I'm thinking to my, it's, it's interesting because the Niners just drafted Trey Lance. And I'm thinking to myself, they're clearly doing something right up there at North Dakota State. I mean, this is a team that won the national championship three straight years. So I'm thinking to myself as a 49er fan, how about we send somebody up there? Because maybe our quarterback is up there. Maybe let's go see what they're doing. So Carson Wentz comes in, and he's lighting it up. He's cerebral. He's good in the pocket. He's good with the long ball. The problem was after he got hurt, I think his confidence was shaken. So with that being said, we move over to this season in Indianapolis where he's now got a fresh start. Okay, I'm ready. I got a really good offense. This team in Indianapolis, they're right at the doorstep. You know, you take Phillip Rivers out. We put Carson Wentz in, and we're right at the doorstep. Now he gets hurt. So where do we go from here? Well, it turns out the injury isn't that bad. You know, they were talking about five to 12 weeks. Well, okay. it's not that bad. So that's a good thing. It's not like – he broke his leg and he's out for 10 weeks and we got to scratch him for the season because like you just said, if we got to bring Nick Foles back in here, forget it. We're, we're, it's a wrap. I, I'm just, I'm not doing it. But I think that with Carson Wentz, health is the most important thing with him. Now they still have to, in the meantime, because I don't think he starts week one. I don't. No. I don't know. I don't think he starts week one. I, I don't think, I think he's going to be on a shelf. I don't think he's going to be on a shelf for 12 weeks, but I don't think he starts week one. I, I think he misses the first. I think he misses the first quarter. I think maybe the first three, four weeks of this. That wouldn't surprise it's me. Actually, if this is possible to say, it's probably a good thing that if he was going to get injured, that he got injured early on, so he doesn't miss the right. If he gets hurt week one or week two, well, then your season's done. So well, you figure, if there's a good time to get hurt, that was the time. Right. Well, you figure if he misses the first quarter, he missed the first three or four games plus what he missed already. We're talking about two months, so he should be good by that be time. Yeah. All right, so he should be good by that time. Well, what do we do in the meantime? Because we still got to have a solid quarterback. We probably, And I've always said this, Tone, you're only as good as your backup quarterback. Because if your quarterback goes down, your season can go right in the tank. Because your, quarter, your second quarterback, if he's not good, you can forget about it. So um, with that being said, you're looking at a guy in Carson Wentz, who when he comes back, we hope that this thing is shored up at least. We hope that we can be – a 500 team, maybe even a game or two above 500. But we can't rush him back neither because no, you don't want to no. screw him up even more. You definitely don't want to do that. Yeah. yeah, based on his history, based on his history, he got, yeah, if they can come out, like like I said, I think if he can come back like week five and they're two and two, you're okay. You, you just, you can't be 0 and 4, 1 and 3. Like that's, no. that's too big of a hole. No. If you're that 2 and 2, heck, if, if you can use the running game, right? Jonathan Taylor still, or, or I think, like I said, I think they still got other pieces. Mm -hmm. So they could be two and two, you know, catch a break and be three and one, and he comes back. Hey, you, hey, you're fine. Um, that so, defense, yeah, that defense that Indianapolis has is really going to have to shore up because oh, yeah. losing Carson Wentz, they're going to be lacking in offense. So Leonard's going to have to step up, and he's going to have to be. I mean, they just signed him to an extension, so he's going to have to be huge for them. So yeah, they're going to have to win some tight ones. Yes, they are. Speaking speaking of making the playoffs, not making the playoffs, our friends at CBS Sports put this out there. And I made my, you know, predictions, but mm -hmm. I want to get your take on it. So they give us the seven teams that made the playoffs last year, NFC, AFC. So we start in the NFC, and I'm just going to read them out to you. And the question was, which one is most likely to miss the playoffs this season? So you can only pick one. So last year we had the Packers, the Bucks, the, oh, by their old name, the football team in Washington up there, Washington. the Saints, the Rams, the Seahawks, and my beloved Bears, watch yourself on this question. Which is the team? <laughs> which is the team that does not is most likely? It doesn't. Let's be clear. It doesn't say it won't make the playoffs. It's the right. one that's that's most likely 
to if you had to pick one most likely to miss the playoffs? Well, we'll start at the top. Until Tom Brady takes his pads off, I'm not betting against Tom Brady. So oh, sure. 100%. As, as long as Tom Brady is there, and what Tampa basically did was they ran it back. We bringing everybody back. We already won the bowl game. We bringing everybody back. Dominic and Sue is going to be great. So we're bringing everybody back. And as long as Tom Brady is in pads, I'm not betting against Tom Brady. I don't know about the Saints. Even though I think Jameis Winston wins that job, I'm, I think that he has a really good season this year. But the NFC South is a really tough division. Mm-hmm. I know that. And, and keep in mind, it's going to have to be wild card, right? Because we're assuming the Bucs are winning that division. Yeah. I think they are winning that division, which means that if you're going to be, if, if the Saints are going to be a wild card, they're going to have to win 11 games. I don't know if they win in 11 games. They're going to have to win 11, 12 games in order to get that wild card spot. So the Saints might be on the outside looking in, but I do think that Jameson, I think he has a better season this year. I think he wins that. I think he wins that job, and I think he has a better season. I think Green Bay will be back. I think I don't know about your Bears, uh, and. And I, I know that I, I, okay. I don't want to That's rush Justin Fields. I'm, and, and just hear me out for a second. I don't want to rush Justin Fields. Now, I know how you feel about Andy Dalton. Andy Dalton is a, a seven-year starter, but we saw what he did with the Cowboys last year. The last – Justin Fields is your future. I'm not sure he's – he looks great, but he looks great against second and third unit guys. I don't want to throw him out there and screw him up. Uh, especially we, now we've banged up on the offensive line. So we've got right, some on top of that. So okay. I'm not I'm not ready. If if you start the season we're two and five, okay, then maybe may, may, let, let, let's start looking in his direction and get him some reps. Yeah. Because this is this guy's not gonna this is this is not something that's gonna be fixed overnight. So let's see. In the NFC South, I think Tampa's going to be back. In the NFC East, I think the Cowboys are going to be back. I can't believe I'm I'm, I'm, I'm vouching for the Cowboys. Uh, Cowboys. I can't believe you said that, but yeah. Yeah, I can't believe I'm vouching for the Cowboys. I think the Giants are going to be something to deal with. I know I, I know what Washington is. I absolutely know what Washington is. But I think the Cowboys are going to be back. I think in the NFC South, Tampa's going to be it. In the NFC North, I think Green Bay is going to be it. And in the NFC West, I, I want to say my 49ers. Even though you know Jimmy G, when he's upright, he wins eighty percent of his games. If if, if healthy, if healthy. The problem is healthy. That's the that's the difference. Now I'm not sold on Matt Stafford. I'm I'm not. I wish I could tell you, Tony, that I was sold on Matt Stafford. I think he was before he got to uh, before he got to Los Angeles, five and twenty six against teams with winning records. Now he's definitely a big time quarterback, and when it comes to throwing the football, absolutely. But when I kind of I, I I think that Stafford is a better version of Tony Romo, and people kill me when I say that. That's what he looks like to me. He looks like a better version of Tony Romo. So those are the four those are the four division leaders. Now, when you talk about the NFC West, I think Seattle's going to be back. Yep. When you talk about the NFC South. I can't. I, I don't think anybody. I think it's one team that comes out the NFC South. Out the NFC East, yep. it's going to be either between. Wash, it's, it's going to be either between Washington. <laughs> I'm laughing because I'm, I'm talking about the Cowboys, and, and every year is their year. Every yeah, year the Cowboys are winning. They've been the Cowboys have been winning it since we've been on in college. paper. On paper, I think they're 25 straight Super Bowls. They, yes. they, that's what I'm saying. The Cowboys they've been winning it ever since we've been in college. So in that NFC East, the other team I think it's it's either going to be the Washington Football Giant, I, I, Washington Football Team, or the Giants. I don't think the Giants are there yet, but I think that. I think Danny Dimes takes a big step this year. I, I, sure. I think he does. And then the NFC North, I think it's just the Packers. And I I, I wish I could say that Minnesota's gonna be better because they got a really good they got a really good wide receiving call. Cousins is the guy who makes me nuts though. Cause yeah. one minute Cousins looks like a Pro Bowl quarterback and not a Pro Bowl quarterback, like an all pro quarterback. And the next minute he looks like, what is this dude doing in the NFL? Why is he mm-hmm. here? So that's as far so, as I'm going with those guys. So, so you got you got to pick one. So, is it Washington, the Saints? Or it sounds like Washington, the Saints, or the Bears. Which one is most likely to miss? You got to give us one. The Saints. The Saints. I think they're out. All right. So here's 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 where I am. I think Tampa Bay. I think those are those two are in. I think Seattle's in. 
the ones that I have on the cusp. You know, I'm not picking against my Bears, so you know my no, Bears no. are. Out. So I think the Saints, until the I think the Saints are actually going to surprise a lot of people. I think they're going to be the surprise team because right now they're flying under the radar, and mm-hmm. I think people forget. They think of the 30 interceptions that Winston threw his last year in Tampa Bay. I think they forget how good he is. I think they forget that that was part of Bruce Arians' offense is to take chances and you're going to throw. Tom Brady threw a lot of interceptions last year, not as many as Winston, but he still threw more than he usually does. Winston, so did, I think throw, Winston did throw. He threw 33 touchdowns that year and five thousand dollars. So and that's what people forget. And I think yeah. in a Sean Payton offense. He's going to take care of the ball a little bit better, and he's got better weapons. He uh, just, Hey, he always has Alvin Kamara to dump it off to. You know what okay. I mean? Like, so there's always that safety bucket. So I think the Saints actually stay in as a wild card. Mm-hmm. So for me, it comes out to two teams. One of them is going to surprise you. So I'm going to start okay. with the non-surprise, which is Washington. Mm-hmm. Why do I say Washington? The same team has not repeated as NFC East champs in the last decade. So am I going to put my – Am I going to put my money on and say, well, Washington's going to break that trend? No, I'm, I'm not. Although I think they're going to be improved on offense because I like Ryan Fitzpatrick. He's still not that stable elite quarterback. He's just a really good quarterback, much like Kirk Cousins, looks mm-hmm. like an all-pro, then looks like a how is he in the NFL. From play to play, not even just game to game. Fitz so, just I'm not seems re- to stick around, man. I don't know what it is about Fitz, but he just seems to hang around, man. Because when he's good? He's so good. Yeah. Like, you know, and so so do I think more than one team's coming out of the NFC East? No, I do not. Mm-hmm. So that's why there, if I had to pick, it's gonna be between them and the team that I think is gonna be the biggest disappointment in the NFL this year. The Rams. I got a lot of slack. I wouldn't be surprised, Tony, if they finished last in the NFC in the NFC West. That wouldn't surprise I, me. It, it, I, I don't trust Matthew Stafford. And I've I had don't. people respond to me when I put that out there, and they said, he's going to surprise you. He hasn't for the last 12 years. No, he hasn't he has surprised not. me in the last 12. So, do, now, is the defense good enough? Yeah, but I think they're in the toughest. With a healthy 49ers, a revamped Seahawks team, um, a, a Cardinal team that I all – that I think is going to be an Arizona that I think is going to be better than people think too. Mm-hmm. Like if you look at Arizona, they've got the quarterback, they've got receivers, they've got an improved defense. I know that's still the question mark, but they've got an improved defense. They've also got a running game. Like I think Connor, people are forgetting about him, mm-hmm. is going to have a bounce back year too. So that play, that play calling in Arizona is what trips me up because I like what they have in terms of their weapons offensively with Murray and. And they probably have the best wide receiver. They, they have arguably the best wide receiver in the game. I can't believe yeah. that Houston just handed him over for a bucket of extra crispy and a six pack. That was incredible to me. But that's probably why he was fired. But I question the play calling in Arizona. That's my issue with them offensively because they should be a lot better I, I, than they are. I, I and I agree with you. But like I said, that's I think that's the toughest division in football mm-hmm. because again, if all things equal, everybody's healthy. They got four teams that legitimately have a shot at winning that division. I don't yeah. think I can say that for any other division. Like, I can't, can't think of one where I could say, yeah, all four teams have a legit shot at winning. There's always one, at least one, right? There's always one that's like, eh, yeah, okay. Right? Like, I don't won't go through the list, but just think through the division. If you look, right at, the, if you look, at, if you look at the NFC South, Carolina is not winning that division. Yeah, Carolina's not winning. We AFC, already know that. AFC East, the Jets aren't winning. We right? look at the AFC. AFC, AFC North, North is North. strong. Bengals is not are, winning that yeah, division. Yeah, they're not winning. So that's what, that. there's always at least one team that will. Here's a division right. that's with, that has that. So, mm-hmm. so I'm gonna I'm gonna as much as I want to say Washington, but you know, no nobody's repeated as what I'm gonna go Rams just to be like, you know what? I'm gonna stick with my guns and say I think they're gonna be the biggest disappointment, and it's gonna be the Rams that are most likely to miss. Okay. We're a little short on time, so I'm gonna give you the AFC ones, and let's let's um because I know we, we we are short on time, but I I still want to do it because it's important. So. I know this is the one you're going to pick, so I'm going to start with them. Kansas City. <laughs> the Bills. <laughs> uh, the Bills. Uh, the Titans, Tennessee Titans, the Pittsburgh Steelers, Baltimore Ravens, Cleveland Browns, Indianapolis Colts. The Colts are, the so, Colts are going to be tricky. I think, I think the Colts are going to be tricky. I think Cleveland's going to surprise some people. I don't like the dynamic between – Baker and ODB. I just something's not correct with them too. I don't when he's when ODB's out the lineup, they are much better. 
And the, right? not only, yeah, they are, man. And the numbers just prove it. They just something's going on with ODB and Baker, where it's, this is just not working. I don't know what the problem is, because because ODB is great as a wide receiver, and I think that Baker, I think he's an above average quarterback. I don't think he's great, but he could have guys around him who make him great. But Beckham Jr., that thing is just not working. So with that being said, they have to find something in between those two to make up for what they lack. Because like I said, that thing is that thing is screwed up. I don't think that Baker was a one-hit wonder last year. I think Cleveland's going to be back in the middle of it. I do think that. Tennessee, now – if they can continue to do what they're doing, and we already know what their offense is, it's Derrick Henry. Yep. We know that for a fact. Derrick Henry is their offense. So if they can continue doing what they're doing, I think they're going to be right back in the middle of it too. But the team that I think, I think Pittsburgh takes a step back. I do. I, I think Pittsburgh takes a step back. So, so, so we've, we're, we've got the same division, and I'll and I'll tell you why. I think I think the Chiefs win their division again. Mm-hmm. I think the Bills win their division again. I think Tennessee wins that division. So there's three out of the four divisions. We've got the leaders they're seeing in. So now you've got the Colts, the mm-hmm. only one that, you know, I think still get a wild card. Mm-hmm. What are the chances that three AFC North teams make the playoffs again? Zero. Right? So so now so now I've never I got from seven to three. So now mm-hmm. I'm Cleveland, Pittsburgh, and Baltimore. Mm-hmm. Do I believe Baltimore will be back? Yep, sure do. So now I'm down to two. Mm-hmm. So now I'm between Pittsburgh and Cleveland. Now I'm I'm of a different opinion than you. I don't think Cleveland wins ten games this year. Mm. I, I just I I don't think whatever that dynamic is. I don't. I still don't trust Baker. And, Let me ask you this: think, as a as a as a as a wild card team in the AFC, how many games is it going to take to get in? I think you need to win nine or ten games. Okay, and that's and that's where I have Cleveland at nine or ten, and I think mm-hmm. it's going to be just like last year. It's going to be like a tie break, and then mm-hmm. you know they may it's a coin flip on the Browns. Now I said that yesterday, and of course right away, oh you're a Browns hater. No, I'm not a Browns hater. I'm just not a Baker believer, right? I believe in. I love their defense. I love their defense. I love their offense, skill positions. Mm-hmm. I Baker makes me very nervous. I feel like if they had a chance, like there was rumors. I don't know if this is true, but if they had a chance trade Baker like for Aaron Rodgers was the rumor or other I, I do it because I think I still think they're a quarterback away I think to your point I think he's good I don't think he's great and I think with guys like Landry and oh you know Odell and those guys you need a quarterback that can handle those egos and I think that might be the issue between Odell and Baker they both see each oh. other kind of on this level and I think that's maybe where they clash I don't know if, if Green Bay calls you up and they ask for Baker Mayfield and two ones and you pass as a GM, you're fired. That day. Now I'm not you know, saying it's, it's rumor, that right? Day. It's rumor. I don't know. Yeah. You, you're yeah, fired. Of course. Yeah, you do it. You have to do it because even if you think Rogers only has three, four years left, who they have a running back with Nick Chubb, who they have at the receiving court. You make that call and you go to the Super Bowl two out of those four years, I would bet. Absolutely. Now, now, so everyone's now of course expecting me to say the Browns. Unfortunately, I think it's gonna be the Steelers. I think the Steelers, uh, I, I think Ben Roethlisberger is not going to be the same guy we saw coming back. And I think they're the ones that, that take the, you know, I think Cleveland and Pittsburgh both take a step back, but I think mm-hmm. Pittsburgh takes the bigger step back and, and they just miss it. Like, I'm not saying they're going to have a, I, I think they, I think you're going to see a, a situation where like the Browns, the Steelers and another team have like nine, 10 wins. Mm-hmm. And it's going to be on a tie break at the Pittsburgh Steelers that are the off men out this year. Most likely, most likely, not guaranteed, because that was the question. Most likely, so I, I'm with you. Then I think we both got the Steelers. Yeah. So that ends it uh, for the fluent and chill NFL edition. Don't forget to check out the NBA edition every Wednesday, NFL on Fridays, TikTok Live 8 p.m. every Monday, and subscribe, send your comments, and, and let us know what you want us to talk about next week. Till then, take it light, but take it.